Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the orbital quantum number L. Again, L represents something about the angular momentum of the electron. It represents, in a way, both the magnitude that the angular momentum can have and the direction. And now we're going to take a little closer look to that. So the magnitude of the angular momentum is defined as the magnitude of L. L, of course, in classical mechanics, the angular momentum can be defined as the moment of inertia times omega, the angular velocity, which for the electron would be mr squared times v over r, which of course would be equal to mr times v. But of course in quantum mechanics, r and v for the orbit of an electron are very defined. They're quantized, so therefore the angular momentum is quantized. The angular momentum, the magnitude thereof, is defined as the square root of L times L plus 1 times H bar. Now, when L equals 0, that means the possible values for the angular momentum is 0. In other words, there's no defined angular momentum when L is equal to 0. But when L is equal to 1, the magnitude of the angular momentum is going to be the square root of 2 times H bar. When L equals 2, the angular momentum is going to be the square root of 6 times H bar. And when L equals 3, the magnitude is going to be the square root of 12 times h bar. So that's the magnitude of the angular momentum. But then the direction itself can also be quantized. As a matter of fact, not just can, it is quantized. And we define the possible directions relative to the arbitrary axis, and let's pick the z-axis, an arbitrary axis, then L sub z, the direction relative to the z-axis, can is defined as being an energy number times h bar, where m is going to be 1 plus or minus or 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so forth, all the way up to the value of l that l can have. Now, notice that when l is equal to 1, the possible directions that the angular momentum can have is in the z, is relative to the z direction, would be 0 times h bar, 1 times h bar, or negative 1 times h bar. So there's three possible directions for the angular momentum relative to some arbitrary axis defined by the value of L. Because notice that the maximum integer number you can pull out of the square root of 2, which is about 1.4, is the number 1 or the number 0. Or it can also be negative 1. When we go to L equals 2, notice that the square root of 6 is somewhere between 2 and 3. So all the energy values you can pull out, negative or positive, would be 2, 1, 0, negative 1, or negative 2. So when L equals 2, this represents the D subshell, there's five possible directions for the angular momentum. Now, we have to be careful. The angular momentum will never be pointing to a specific direction because the uncertainty principle doesn't allow us to know exactly what the direction of the angular momentum will be of an electron at any point in time. So in other words, the angle relative to the axis will be defined by the quantum state, but it could be anywhere, it could actually rotate anywhere around like that at a specific angle. So the angular momentum itself is not determined by knowing the exact direction, it's determined by the angle relative to the z-axis, and we can calculate all these various angles, but then it can actually point in any direction relative to that angle. And so we'll learn a little bit more about that as well. But now you can see that there's two things we need to know about the angle, the, the orbital quantum number. First of all, that this equation here defines the amplitude that the angle momentum can be. And so that depends on the value of L. There will be one specific value for the amplitude of the angular momentum. And then, depending upon what the value of L is, there will be a certain number of position states that it can be in. Basically, direction of the angular momentum. When L equals 0, there's no direction defined. When L equals 1, there's three directions defined. When L equals 2, there's five directions defined. When L equals 3, there will be seven directions defined, and so forth. And this is how they are calculated. The directions are calculated by saying what energy number or what absolute value of energy number will fit inside the value defined by this equation right here. If it's a square root of 6, it can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and so forth. So that's the physical meaning of the, of the value of the orbital quantum number. 
And that's how we define it.